Hey folks, Jonathan here. Here's where we're at on the uh, sawmill. Gotten quite a bit done. Get ready to cut up this frame. Uh, got some machine work done. My hubs. Uh, this is going to be the drive. I'm going to put a piece in here, weld it in, then we're going to bore a one inch hole. And that's actually a hub and a CV joint off of a 2012 Nissan. And there's the rear one. So, got one piece of track on that side. Now I'm going to get this carriage set up and then we're going to roll the carriage back and forth to tack the rest of the track on. So that's on this side. So that's what we're working on now. Alright. Okay folks, here's the wheels I'm using for my carriage. They're already got V's in them. Uh, it was cheaper to buy these. They ended up being about, I think, $10 or $12 a piece. And that's with the roller bearings. It's got roller needle bearings all the way across and it's got uh, inserts in them. It came with these bolts. It had grease fittings on the ends, but it also had grease fittings here. So you can grease them either way. But I needed longer bolts, so I put gradient bolts in it. But uh, something I noticed while I was sitting here. Aha, uh -huh, there's the steel we're using. So it's nice not to be using China stuff. Okay, folks, working away on this thing. Got the carriage pretty much welded together, just tacked, you know, because I, I don't like permanent, don't anything permanent the way that I engineer and design, but we've got it uh, up and done, and now I've got these, I've got two of these solid rods, and I, I don't mind the weight here. I'm not pushing this thing. This thing's going to be power feed, and I got plenty of power, so the heavier this thing is, I think, personally, the better it'll do. I don't know, but maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think it's going to hurt our eye beams down there or give us any problems, but uh, the plan is I'm going to go see if I've got a couple old hydraulic cylinders that's got two-inch bore inside, and I want something that's going to slide up and down these one-inch, I mean these two-inch uh, solid rods, solid bars. Now, so far, I bought these wheels. I bought them two shafts and the block bearings and i had i bought but already had the uh, ang wiring so that's all i'm into it for so far now i've got uh sprockets and chain coming uh chain being probably the most expensive except for the engine i bought an 18 horse duramax engine off of ebay and you know they had pretty good reviews we'll see 18 horse uh, electric start so we'll try it out uh, that was about 400 dollars. so that's the most expensive thing so far but so far you know we're still under a thousand bucks so i'm hoping to have it done for under a thousand bucks but we'll see all right okay folks i have come up with a plan two inch solid bar and then hydraulic cylinders uh these or this one come off of a jacobson that golf course mower and i just cut it honed it to where it would fit on really good so that's going to be our up and down and i left the fittings i'm going to take these out and i'm going to put grease fittings in place and you know it'd be nice to have one in the middle but it'll get plenty of grease if i just grease both of them and uh i've got to go take the other cylinder off of the machine and go ahead and get the other one ready cut and ready and I'll show you what the leftover parts are all right you can see I just cut the bottom off cut that off uh, this was a one-way cylinder but it would have worked as a two-way the way they had it set up but not that bad of cylinders but you know they've been laying back in the back for ages and you know when you need them you need them so I'll show you the hose this will give you an idea how long they've been laying back there so I'm going to go get the other one and hope that it's in good shape and I can cut it off just like this and get to work on it and then uh, we're going to start trying to get the carriage put together here. Okay folks, so I've got both of them done and got these cut the same length, three foot. Trying to figure out how I'm going to do it, where I'm going to put them. Uh, don't want to screw up, so I'm going to try to uh, think this stuff through about a million times. We'll see what we can figure out. Okay, so I got my 100 foot of chain in. It's number 50. This ain't a little chain, but uh, got my chain and the shafts, the bearings, and the gears. And the plan is to set these up so the gears are right here at the outside edge. Uh, the top of the gear is high enough that the chain runs on top all the way to the carriage, comes back and comes around, and then runs down all the way to the other end and does the same thing. 
and it just circles back to the carriage. Now, the other shaft on the other end, I'm going to have the uh, variable speed DC forward reverse unit turning it, so there'll be a sprocket in the center of it also. And I think I've got it set up so it'll run, uh, well, we hope, uh, that'll run really slow going, and then I can speed it up coming back. So. Uh, I think it. I think it'll work out fine. But I mean, worst comes to worst, we change some sprocket sizes and stuff. It's not that big of a deal. But uh, but I've got to do some carving out here and changing around. That's why I left everything all rough. And uh, I've got to figure out how I'm going to mount this. And uh, got uh, I forgot to get key stocks. So. But uh, the chain, two hundred dollars, about two bucks a foot, a hundred feet. And like I said, I went with fifty. That's heavy chain, but we needed heavy. Uh, now I've worked around uh, circle mills enough to know that sawdust don't hurt chains too much. Uh, it don't really build up on them; it just pushes it through, and it you know it's not a big issue with with sawdust and chains that I have ever run into anyway. And so uh, I don't think we'll have any problems there. And you know we'll deal with it as we go. All right, all right, folks, we're moving along on it. Uh, I got some cleaning up to do on this thing. I don't want to leave it too nasty but pretty much got this lined up where I want it it raises and lowers good and then uh, we've got to come out on this side with the the wheel and then we're going to come back behind it with the pulley and everything and the engine is going to go behind it and then we've got the piece that slides in here we're going to do something with all that weld it up and grind it and straighten it out but uh, I don't want to do any more than a half to but we're going to do some but anyway I got a new motor in okay this came uh, FedEx today it's a, of course, China made Duramax or Duro Max, 18 horsepower. And, uh, you know, trying to keep it cheap. We'll put this China stuff on it, see how long it lasts anyway. But, uh, I mean, there's actually some really good reviews on these things, but, you know, a few that aren't, and most of, most of them are good. But we'll see. Uh, they didn't beat it too bad. They bent the, the switch box a little bit on it, and that was about it. But uh besides that pretty good shape so uh electric start of course i'm no use pulling the rope if you don't have to uh older you get the smarter you work all right okay folks i jumped over to the uh the power feed for the uh carriage just for the heck of it and as you can see i got one shaft on bearings mounted and sprockets where i want them so that's going to put the chain coming across the top right down through here and over the sprocket and then it's going to hang down here and I might have to make a guard for it or you know just something to hold it or whatever I mean it's going to be long because we're talking about you know an 18 foot carriage plenty left over uh, it came with 10 links uh, master links so we've got plenty of that so this is good to go here this I like this work out really well now this was rough cut and all that but I actually got the length of this squared up with the frame so the length is right the when you get these sprockets the keyway is always going to be on a tooth I mean it's going to be in the same spot on every sprocket so you know no matter how you put it it's not going to throw you off because we want these to be exactly the same but now there's going to be adjusters on both ends uh, chain adjusters so that should uh, make it easy for us. And I'll show you how we're gonna do the adjusters when we get to that point. But we're moving right along anyway, all right? Okay, and I don't think I've told everybody, I, the other thing, uh, just so you know, uh, this is gonna be operated with two Acme lead screws. Uh, one inch, six pitch, so six turns would be one inch to raise and lower this. Uh, I chose to go that way because I just don't like the cables. I don't like them, you know, just depending on the weight of the carriage. So it's going to be, you know, up and down. And then I've got a one-to-one -one gearbox that's going to change it from uh, vertical to horizontal. So I can put the hand crank on the side. So that way uh, it'll be easier to operate. So it's coming along. i got to clean up a bunch of stuff. That's why I, I get tired of grinding after a while, you know, when you're trying to clean up messes that are already on stuff uh, that's the only bad part about not using new uh, materials and stuff but anyway that's just part of it I guess and uh, 
Everything gets mounted on this side except the shaft runs actually out here. It's going to run through here. The uh, pulley will be right here, the big one, and then the engine will mount on this side of the carriage. And anything else I want, the water tank, stuff like that is going to be on this side of the carriage. And everything else is going to be up here. Now we can weigh this down a little bit if we need to, to make sure it's not too light, you know, on the back side. Which it shouldn't be with the motor. The motor is the heaviest thing, uh, or, or pretty heavy, let's just put it that way. But, uh, and these bars are actually behind the wheels, and they're solid, so that should help us out. But anyway, that's where we're at on it. Uh, I'm going to work a little bit more on it this evening, and then uh, we're going to call it quits, all right? All right, folks, I had to run out on a wreck, so kind of put a damper on things. I had to cut a hole out to get the, uh, they had a jack leg on there, a, uh, it's actually an outrigger off a semi trailer because this was a crane and it had uh, side outriggers on the crane itself and they added this one on the back. So I needed to cut out some anyway, so we're going to repatch that in different so I can still run the chain out of it to go to our variable speed reversible DC gear reduction box. And then uh, we've got them bearings and the sprockets ready. So, it's looking like, if everything goes like I'm hoping and like we're, we're planning here, that uh, we're going to have about half the price of a really cheap uh, Harbor Freight sawmill. Uh, except this should be a whole lot better mill, plus it's going to be power feed. So, we're going to see how it works out. You know, uh, sometimes when you do things, you know, you do them and you got to change as you go. But, uh, so far, so good. And like I said, I'm waiting on my Acme Thread uh, lead screws, and we've got a lot of cleanup on this thing to do. And just wanted to try to get it in place and make sure that this system was going to work okay, which is going to work fine. But I do want to get the grease fittings on there and get everything welded on like it should be. And uh, everything seems really, you know, good and tight so far. So I think it's going to work out okay. All right, so uh, I got a new way of deer hunting. Uh, I got my crane, got this thing picked up, and what I figured I'd do was put some corn under it. And then when a deer got under it, I'll just drop it real fast. So this is uh, something I picked up for 100 bucks, and it's about 9 foot diameter. So we can cut a door in this. I'm actually going to cut a couple slots, and then I'm going to bolt hinges on. And then I will cut the door in it and put a latch on it, and then I'm going to sit it down on the rollback. But I've got to patch the center hole in the top. And it, this is actually the bottom of the crane bin. The top of it's already been cut off. So Anyway, it'll make a good storage building. And uh, the thing is, is, you know, if you got, you know, somebody that ain't very smart, you just tell them to go in there and pee in the corner and, you know, see how long it takes them walking around looking for the corner. So, all right. Appreciate everybody watching. Till next time. Bye.